One of the things that you will notice that if you lay a block on a table or some sort of surface is that it has a tendency not to just fall through that table or surface. So if this were my free body diagram right now where I have some block sitting on a surface here and I only had the gravitational force there, you would expect it to accelerate down. But in that case, it would end up going through that table and that's not what you would expect. So in actual fact, you realize, oh, well, that table is actually providing some sort of force upward and that we normally refer to as the normal force. It has this term because the vector of the normal force is always perpendicular to that surface. And for math terminology, a normal vector is something perpendicular to surfaces. So it's not normal as in versus abnormal or something to that sort. So the question we could ask then is, OK, what is the magnitude of that normal force? If this thing were just sitting on the table there, you would expect it to have no accelerations at all. It's not moving. It's not, uh, there's no change in velocity, definitely. So you know the forces are all balanced out. There's only two forces in opposite directions. They should be the same. So in a case like this, you would say, oh, the normal force is just the weight. At least it's equal to the magnitude of the weight force in the opposite direction. However, that is not a generally true statement, and we could give counterexamples. Suppose I were coming along and pushing down on that block. So there would be some sort of extra push force acting on the block. And of course, we would still have the normal force pushing upward. But in this case, you would expect that that normal force then basically has to not only hold up the block, but it, not just the weight of the block, but also the amount of extra push I'm putting down on that. In the same sort of way, if you'd imagine that we had put some sort of a scale here underneath that block, normally it would just register the weight of the block, but if I started pushing down, the scale would start going up. It would show a larger force. And that scale would be telling you how big that normal force is. The harder I push down, then of course the more that that normal force would end up increasing. On the other hand, suppose instead of pushing down, I were lifting the block. In that case, again, if you had a scale there, you'd expect the scale to register less force, less um, weight it would apparently be. And eventually, if I were to completely pick up the block off the ground, then the block's not even in contact with the ground anymore. You'd expect the normal force to go to zero. So we've now created some good counterexamples to the normal force not necessarily being equal to the weight, even on a flat surface, just by pushing down. We could even complicate this further by, say, putting on an inclined plane and other things. So in general, we cannot say the normal force is just the weight. We can create an infinite number of counterexamples if we want. So we need a general approach for finding the normal force. So let's consider the simple case that we had before and why we first thought the normal force was just equal to the weight in magnitude. In this case, we were saying, all right, well, the normal force needs to be there to ultimately prevent the block just going through the table or through the surface. So we're talking about a balancing of forces. So if we were to include a coordinate system here, we could say, for example, up is the positive y direction to the right positive x. And we could look at the sum of the forces in the y direction. In that case, we would just have the normal force pointing upward, gravitational force pointing downward. And like we said before, it's not even moving up and down, let alone accelerating up and down. So we know that from Newton's second law, the sum of these forces needs to equal zero. OK, then, with one step of algebra, I see that the normal force is just equal to the weight in magnitude here. So that was for the simple case. And how we derive that is by setting up Newton's second law in the direction where the normal force exists. And if we further complicate this, we can still accommodate that using the exact same strategy. And we can see what will happen to that normal force. 
So we'll move this off to the side now. And consider another scenario. How about the case where I was pushing down on the block? Okay, well, we can do the exact same sort of thing. We can do some of the forces in the y direction. Again, we still have the normal force up. We have the weight down. And we have that push force down. And like before, again, it's not moving up and down, not accelerating up and down. These forces need to sum up to zero. Nice to be balanced out. Again, we can do a step of algebra, solve for the normal force, and see that the normal force is equal to mg plus fp, or f push. So in that case, then, you see that the normal force is not just the weight, but it is greater than the weight. We have an additional amount of force here. So that makes sense, that we push down on this block, then the table or the surface needs to push up with a greater force to maintain the table in place. And if instead I were lifting this thing up, well, in that case, the force I would have here would actually be in the positive direction, and then this would be a minus sign, and so the normal force would be smaller than weight. It'd be weight minus some amount of force. So we can see generally then how we want to figure this out. We want to look at the sum of the forces in the y direction, and here we have the y direction parallel to the direction of the normal force. We'll go with one more example to make this explicit in other more complicated cases. Here, for example, an inclined plane. Here, the force of uh, gravity, the weight, is straight down, while the normal force, again, has to be perpendicular to the surface. And so in this case, the forces are not exactly opposite directions of each other. We can actually see, then, that the force of gravity is going to actually be at an angle from the same direction of the normal force. The thetas I've drawn here are the same, actually, and with a little bit of geometry, you can prove that those will be the same. And to simplify things, I'm going to choose a rotated coordinate system such that the x direction is parallel to the surface, y direction is perpendicular to it, and so in the direction of the normal force. So in this case, the force of gravity is not completely in the x or y direction with this coordinate system. It has a component in the y direction. It has a component in the x direction. And before we carry on, well, let's just make sure we understand what that y component should be. Using that angle, we could then, for example, look at the adjacent side to that. And the adjacent side would be the y component. So if we use from trigonometry that cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side, in this case, the y component of weight divided by the hypotenuse, the total weight vector. We see then that the y component of weight is just the same as the weight times cosine of theta. And we could do the same thing for the x component, but we only care about the y component for now. Because if we're trying to find the normal force, we could again do the same work of summing the forces in the y direction with our rotated coordinate system. If we do that, then we can find, all right, the force normal is completely in the positive direction, and we have the weight component in the y direction. And again, we should not expect this thing to be moving up or down in the y direction. That is that basically this thing isn't going to go above the surface or go into the surface. It's just going to slide along. And so once again, we'd expect the sum of these forces to be zero. So in that case, I can do a step of algebra, solve for the normal force as just the y component of that weight, which as we said is mg cosine theta. Now, since the cosine function can have a value anywhere between plus and minus 1, or if it's just for the positive values, between 0 and 1, if this is between 0 and 1, 
then the multiple of mg with that has to be anywhere between 0 and mg. So in that case, the normal force here could have a value anywhere between nothing and the complete weight value. So for example, if the angle here is 0, cosine of 0 degrees is just 1, or in other words, if this thing is just flat, it's not inclined at all, then the weight is the same as the normal force in magnitude. In the other extreme case, if this incline were at 90 degrees, cosine of 90 degrees is 0, and the normal force would be 0. So in this case, with that setup, you can see that, yeah, definitely the normal force is not just the weight, and it'll have a direct relation with not just the weight here, but also the angle. And we could also further complicate this by adding additional forces on there that would have at least a component in the y direction. But no matter what, we can always do the same procedure of doing some of the forces in the y direction and then solving for the normal force through this step. This is generally true as it follows from Newton's second law and choice of coordinate systems and then trigonometry.